ơn quý vị đến với chương trình bảo hiểm và tài chính của anh Hương. Dạ kính thưa quý vị, khi chúng ta ra đời có rất là nhiều người được may mắn sinh ra trong hoàn cảnh vinh quang phú quý, nhưng lại có một số người rất là bất hạnh và sống trong một cuộc sống thật là nghèo khó. Vậy có bao giờ quý vị đặt câu hỏi là hoàn cảnh có thể ảnh hưởng đến tương lai của chúng ta hay không? Hôm nay chúng tôi với ông Rafael Baziak, một doanh nhân triệu phú, đã trả lời câu hỏi này trong cuốn sách The Billion Dollar Secret hoặc dịch lại là bí mật của tỷ bạc. Anh Hương xin mời quý vị đàm thoại với ông Rafael. So Rafael, thank you so much for joining our show today. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. So before we get into your book, The Billionaire Secret, I want to first get to know who Rafael is. I know you, by your own right, are very successful. You are an accomplished millionaire yourself. And so why did you want to start writing this book? And where did you get your start from? Okay, I have to tell you, um, I am a serial entrepreneur myself. I have pioneered e-commerce uh, in Europe back in the 90s. I developed the first online shop for sporting goods in German-speaking market, meaning Germany, Austria, Switzerland. And it relatively quickly became a multi-million dollar company, a successful company, what um, you would see from the outside but it somehow didn't feel successful from the inside. It was a lot of firefighting, um, a lot of stress. Uh, it was a constant uphill battle, not what mm -hmm. I would, uh, how I env envisioned it, and maybe not on the level um, of uh, success I would like uh, to be. And I could see uh, my competition starting later, becoming more successful, outcompeting me, growing faster in terms of revenue market share. And I realized we had the same business model, but um, we somehow thought differently, probably about business. Uh, the only difference was uh, the uh, personality of the entrepreneur between me and my competitors who, com who as I said, uh, performed much better than me. And I realized there is something missing in, my, in me as entrepreneur, in my entrepreneurial personality. I don't have business education. I am a mathematician myself. So I started to read all these books about millionaires, about business, about entrepreneurship, going to business conferences. And I found myself in that situation where I was high-fiving uh, with other participants on one of the conferences and shouting to each other, you've got a millionaire mind. And it was kind of an aha moment for me because it didn't resonate with me. And I realized, of course, I have uh, millionaire mind, I have created a multi-million dollar company, uh, but it's not, it's just not the level of success um, that uh, I would like to have, because I realized being a millionaire today um, is pretty average performance in business. It's, you could even say a mediocre performance. If you want to get a apartment, let's say in New York, in, uh, in LA, it costs you more than $1 million. Uh, you certainly don't consider being able to afford an apartment as a uh, outrageous business success. That's right. And um, so I, at that time I realized I'd rather have a billionaire mind instead of having just a millionaire mind. And uh, I also realized that if you want to learn uh, from somebody in any uh, aspect of life, you should always learn from the best people um, in that area because the amount of work, the amount of time, the amount of effort you invest in that will be the same, but the, uh, the effect, the result will be different. So who are the best entrepreneurs in the world? Apparently self-made billionaires, because there is one objective measure of success in, uh, in business, and this is net worth, the value you have created in your business career. So the wealthiest people in the world are at the same time the best entrepreneurs uh, in the world the world champions in the industries, you could, uh, you could say. And I made myself on the journey to learn from these best entrepreneurs, from self-made billionaires. And I did it globally and uh, through, throughout different co continents, industries, age groups, uh, cultures, religions, and so on and so on. 
So you mentioned that you've read a lot of books on how to be a millionaire, and there are tons and tons of books out there. Your book is the first of its kind that are sharing the minds of the billionaires. Right. And you have traveled throughout the world to bring that information to the audience in your book. Why did you decide to write this book? Um, yeah, because I, I, I realized that um, uh, the business model is, is just uh, not enough, having the, the right business model. Because in most industries, you have uh, the same, all the uh, companies have the same business model. And uh, it is much more um, important, uh, the personality of uh, the entrepreneur uh, that builds the, um, the, the company, that somehow imposes the company cult culture on the, uh, on the company, that creates or gathers uh, the team, that uh, gives the vision to the company, and so on and so on. And I realized I need to tap into the minds of the best entrepreneurs in the world in order to be able to perform on, on their level. And in order to compete against the people that I had to compete in my industry, I needed to do much better than, uh, than they did. And uh, you know, there are, as you, as you mentioned, thousands of books about millionaire thinking and uh, what uh, was considered until today or until now as um, the success in mainstream, in mainstream or the business success in ma mainstream. This is included in these books, and this is what everybody bases uh, their strategies, their knowledge on. And uh, as I said, I needed to, to do much better than that in order to be able to compete against uh, the uh, incumbents in my industry and uh, to, to go ev even one level higher and uh, to tap into the hearts, the souls, and the brains of self-made billionaires uh, of our times. So. Um the other thing that is unique about your book is that you did not confine it to one culture or one country. You took it worldwide and you interview people from all over the world. I know that your book has taken off really big in Vietnam itself and a lot of our audience are from Vietnam. Tell me, what, with, within your research and going worldwide like that, was there a difference? Is there a difference to, to become a billionaire when you are in one culture versus the other, when you come from one background versus the other? Right. Uh, so you have uh, uh, you have to realize that there was a similar book 100 years ago. It's called uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, and he researched the American culture. And uh, let's say he. He talked to, to the most successful people in the States at the beginning of 20th century and gathered uh, their mindset, their knowledge to create this first uh, philosophy of success that he wrote down in his book. Uh, and I realized, you know, this is a lot of what he, a lot of what he wrote is actually about um, Western mentality, about American way of doing business. And this is actually not really essential for business success. And that's why I went globally in order to compare different cultures, different uh, religions, uh, in industries, also countries, world re regions, and uh, get the common denominator of, this, of these people. So yes, there are different ways to uh, billions or to becoming a billionaire, not only in every country, but also in every industry. There is no given way, uh, like a process, how you become a, a billionaire, but uh, this book is about uh, the mindset. So th this is about being what kind of person you need to be, what, uh, what kind of personality you have to, to have in order to be able to perform on that level for decades that you need in order to, to, uh, to become a billionaire. And um, so these are generally 20 principles of, uh, I call them, of billionaire wealth and success. And um, I can give you maybe uh, a comparison to, to cars, right? So uh, in order to become a billionaire, you have to perform on the highest level of business performance for long, long uh, time. And uh, this is the same as if you, if you drive on a highway, if you want to drive with 200, 250, um, kilometers per hour or let's say you want to drive 150 miles per hour uh, you need to be a Porsche in order to, to be able to do it 
in a sustainable way over uh, several hundreds of miles. Uh, if you have Volkswagen, you may be able to do it maybe for a minute, maybe for 10 minutes, but you will fall apart after uh, several kilometers, right? Mm -hmm. So, and this is uh, what this book is uh, about. The principles of your personality, of your mindset that you have to create in yourself in order to be able to have the chance uh, to reaching that level in, in business performance. So then you talk about the mindset, which is something that perhaps we are born with or develop emotionally, but then there are 20 principles, mm -hmm. and that sounds like a structure. So if we are talking about a mindset and a structure, how do they combine? What do you see that these billionaires mm -hmm did in common that get there because obviously all of them came uh, f through different background and culture, right? So what is it then? Was it the mindset and how do they get from that mindset to that trendy principle? Is it a conscious effort? Okay, so um, first of all, of course, all of the billionaires in my book are self-made and they started from zero and created uh, these fortunes of billions of dollars within li one lifespan and um, they come from Many of them come from really humble beginnings, um, from conditions you wouldn't like uh, to be in yourself and you wouldn't like to change uh, your life for their lives at, the, uh, at their beginning, so to say. Um, and they developed uh, these principles because I, I talk about principles because it's not only mindset, as you, as you notice. This is also the skills you have to uh, to develop the habits, uh, the attitudes toward, toward doing business, toward maybe uh, problem solving, uh, attitudes toward taking risk or uh, acting, uh, these, ki these, ki these kinds of, uh, of principles that are somehow connected to your personality, but it's not only mindset, it's uh, a lot of that is, uh, I would say, maybe heart or soul, right? How you, um, um, how, how you, uh, how you act in your life, in, in, in your business. And um, this is always the question, are they inborn or are, are they, can they be learned? And from my experience, um, most of them or all of them can be actually developed because I have um, examples of uh, billionaires in my book that started, um, that had a, a really a failed start in their lives. Uh, for example, Chota Kwonk, a Chinese billionaire who became uh, the World Entrepreneur of the Year 2004, he, uh, he was expelled from elementary school after four, uh, four grades of uh, schooling and he was generally illiterate because in China uh, after four, uh, four years of schooling you are not unable to learn so many characters that you are, um, that you, you are able to read books or, or press. And he was illiterate. He had a, a behavior problem because uh, he literally peed on uh, his schoolmaster's head, uh, and that's why he was expelled from book uh, from uh, from from the school. And he developed an alcohol problem. So uh, he found himself in this situation at the age of fourteen, that um, he was um, generally an outcast uh, from the society and he was trusted with only one community cow to take care of just one community cow. Nobody trusted him any responsibility. He was just in a lost, in a hopeless position, uh, not earning um, uh, any money, just uh, doing enough in order to pass by to survive. And uh, nevertheless, everything he, he hit the rock bottom and started to think how how to get out of that hopeless situation. So he started to save up for um, for a dictionary, started to uh, cut grass at the river, sell, sell it to horse keepers in order to be able somehow to save up for a dictionary. And after one year of saving, he was able to afford that dictionary. After three more years of saving, he was able to afford an uh, encyclopedia. And from then on, he started self-educating, learning, developing. He never uh, finished any school. He never graduated from any university. Everything he learned in his life was, uh, was learned by himself. Nevertheless, roughly, five, uh, roughly 50 years later, he became a billionaire, one of the most respected uh, entrepreneurs and citizens in uh, China, one of the greatest philanthropists in Asia 
and he became the World Entrepreneur of the Year 2004. So the best, um, he was chosen the best entrepreneur in the world. Um, so from a, a com complete fail start in life with 14, he developed uh, these principles, these skills within uh, his later life and became so extremely successful. And I have another um, billionaire, Chip Wilson, in my book, the founder of Lululemon Atletica. You certainly know that guy, yes, I mean, uh -huh. at least that brand. And um, he, at, at the age of, of 40, he was generally below zero, I mean, with his net worth, right? Um, and he confessed to me, he just discovered this cassette set by uh, Brian uh, Tracy. I think it's called Limitless Achievement or something like that, and went through that cas cassette set and he had uh, just several aha moments and started uh, to develop this uh, right uh, success, um, uh, um, success mindset and uh, strategies in order to, um, to be successful in business. Of course, it was just not just this one ca cassette set, he, he made a lot of uh, discoveries, a lot of uh, development in his uh, later life. But generally, uh, this is one of the principles in my book, this constant development. So billionaires, um, other than, uh, than most people, improve themselves and their businesses each and every day, step by step. They never stop improving. They never stop um, educating themselves. Um, most people in, uh, in, uh, in our society, they have this attitude, they have, um, you know, they go to school, they uh, finish the school, maybe they uh, graduate from a university, and they have this attitude, they have accumulated the knowledge that they now consume in order to make money, mm -hmm. right? So they, uh, d they spend the, the rest of their life consuming what they have learned, so to say, or taking advantage of what they have learned. And the billionaires, as I said, they have a different uh, attitude to that. They don't see uh, like the end of the education. They always develop, they always improve, they always learn a little bit more, a little bit more about themselves, about the business, about the industry, and, uh, and they never see the end. Maybe another uh, example here is Tony Tan Kek Tiong, also a Filipino billionaire, mm -hmm. four and a half thousand restaurants, um, Jollibee Corporation. Uh, Jollibee is um, the largest uh, restaurant chain or restaurant corporation in Asia and one of the top 10 in the world. And um, Jollibee is not just Jollibee, they have also um, Manki Nasal, Red Ribbon in, uh, in the Philippines or in Asia. They have also chains in the States, so Coffee Bean belo uh, belongs to uh, Jollibee and also uh, Smashburger. Mm -hmm. uh, 12 brands all together and Tony Tan Kek Tiong, he uh, went to university, he graduated as an MBA, he started this company, um, become quite successful with 50, maybe 100 restaurants, but at that time he realized he is missing management skills. So he went again to the university in order to acquire uh, the management skills and um, but it wasn't the end of his education. So even after becoming a multimillionaire, he, uh, he had the need of more education. But then, several years later, he became a billionaire. He became mm -hmm. not only a billionaire, he became the world entrepreneur of the year 2009, meaning the best entrepreneur in the, in the world at that time. And he still, until today, goes every year for one week to Harvard in order to acquire some piece of chunk of knowledge in some aspect of, uh, of business in order to improve a little bit and uh, employ, uh, employ that knowledge in, in his business. So this constant never ending development, this is characteristics of, of billionaires. So I'm hearing out of the 20 principles, you got the mindset, you got the education, the continuous development, mm -hmm. the structure, mm -hmm. and there's 16 more principles in there that our audience needs to hear about or read about. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it is a bestseller on Amazon right now. Yeah, it's uh, number one uh, Amazon bestseller in the US, UK, Canada, Germany, Brazil, several other countries, right? And like I say, it, it's gaining momentum in Asia, especially in Vietnam. There are 40 articles being written up. 
about the billion, uh, the uh, billionaire secret, and you. Billion dollar secret. Billion dollar secret, and you. Um, and this book can also be found on thebilliondollarsecret.com. The key here is the word the, uh, thebilliondollarsecret.com. Um, that our audience can check out and get a copy of the book and yeah, hopefully and they can go get also a free chapter uh, if, uh, if they want to, to see if uh, you know if this is the, the book is worth uh, reading and uh, I ensure you it is and so um, Raphael I would expect then in a few years when I invite you back that you will become a billionaire at that time and then we can talk about that well, journey I will certainly <laughs> uh, become much more successful in business I actually have already uh, right because I have been applying uh, the principles uh, for one year in my company uh -huh. also I was traveling most of the time so 10% of my time I spent maybe on uh, and business development in my company and uh, in that time I was able to double the revenue of my multi-million dollar company and more than triple the, uh, uh, the profitability or the, the profit of the company. So uh, it, it apparently works. It works, it works. So our audience are gonna be checking this out and I will have a whole lot more audience that will become billionaire in the next few years. I hope so, <laughs> yeah, that's why I wrote this book. Great, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you for being here. Dạ kính thưa quý vị, như quý vị đã nghe thấy, nếu mà quý vị đã từng hỏi câu hỏi là làm sao để tôi có thể trở thành một người triệu phú thì hôm nay Ánh Hương đã đưa đến quý vị ông Rafael Baziat để giới thiệu cho quý vị một cái phương pháp không những trở thành triệu phú mà trở thành tỷ phú. Và Ánh Hương hy vọng khi mà quý vị trở thành tỷ phú như vậy thì Ánh Hương đừng quên, uh, quý vị đừng quên Ánh Hương nhé. Xin cảm ơn quý vị và hẹn quý vị vào kỳ tới.